Well, I just want to take this opportunity to welcome you to Christmas Eve weekend here at Discovery Point Church. We, uh, we're honored that you're joining us uh, online with our online platform uh, this weekend, and uh, we're hoping that you have a, have a very, very Merry Christmas. When was the last time that, that you received such incredibly good news that, that you were filled with joy? Uh, something so amazing that when you heard it, that, that your life just, uh, there was a wave of joy. You know, m- maybe as you think about the Christmas holidays and, uh, of course, tomorrow being Christmas, maybe you got news that y- your family was going to be together this Christmas season. And so uh, that brought joy, maybe a little anxiety as well, but it also brought that, that sense of joy in your life. Or uh, maybe recently you, you got a great health report. And when you got the word from the doctor's office, you were not only relieved, but you, you were filled with a sense of joy. Or maybe it was just your last report card. I mean, that alone is a joyful occasion. Or, good grief, it could be maybe, maybe you got news that you just won the lottery. So whatever it was, I want you to just think about that time when, when you received good news and it brought joy into your life. And I, I think we would agree upon that we all could use more good news in our lives. And, and the Christmas story is a story of this incredibly good news. So in Luke's account, in Luke chapter 2, uh, he introduces us to this incredibly good news uh, surrounding the birth of Jesus. So I'm going to be reading in Luke chapter 2, uh, verses 8 through 14. Please join me. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field. They were keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. So here Luke introduces us to this good news that we see in the Christmas story that is qualified by bringing great joy. And and this good news has some some interesting elements to it. Let me just point out a few that Luke records for us. First of all, you see that that this good news, Luke tells us, it is is announced by an angel. Now, some believe that this angel is Gabriel. The text doesn't specifically say that. But nonetheless, it is announced by an angel. In other words, this news is so incredibly important. Uh, it, it is so meaningful that God decided, I'm going to send this good news to be announced by an angel. And, and I think that we could agree upon uh, this news is amazing, and, and sometimes uh, the, the content of the news certainly is powerful, but it's also the one who is delivering the news that brings deeper meaning to that news. And so here it is announced by an angel. But notice who it's announced to. Luke says that this, this good news that brings great joy, it's, it's announced to the shepherds, to the shepherds. You know, we often read over that, but if you take a little closer look, that seems a little puzzling, doesn't it? It, it seems as if this incredible news that, that is unfolding in the Gospel of Luke would have actually been announced to the religious folks, right? Uh, to the scribes, to the Pharisees, to the priest, or, or at the very least, at the very least, to the emperor. But no, Luke tells us that this announcement by this angel is announced to the shepherds. And, you know, in the Old Testament, shepherding was, was a noble profession. But as we move into the New Testament, shepherding had lost a little bit of its professional luster we could say. Shepherds were often uh, uneducated, unskilled. Some would say these guys are even unsavory characters. 
Uh, they were often working uh, long hours, isolated. In fact, their voice was not even, could not even hold up in a court uh, as a testimony. And so uh, by the time we get to the, the New Testament, these shepherds, they w- didn't have the position that they once had in the economy of God. But as I think about this news being announced to the shepherds, there's, there's some connection, I think, to it being announced to shepherds. And this is not, not announcing this great news of the good shepherd that has now arrived. So it's announced by an angel, and it's announced to shepherds. And then we see there in verse 10 that, that this good news that brings great joy, it is accessible to all people. This is what Luke tells us. Now, the writer of, of this epistle, Luke, uh, some believe that Luke was a Gentile. And we see this in Colossians chapter 4, where seems to be a reference there that he may have been a Gentile. With that in mind, there's this element of this accessibility of this good news of the gospel going further beyond where it has before in the economy of God. In fact, in this verse 10, Luke uses a word that certainly describes the people of Israel, but some scholars believe it can be expanded to include all people. It's as if God is now saying this good news that brings great joy, it is expanding, it is accessible to all people. And and then we see in verse 11 something interesting, too, that this good news that brings great joy, it is available in Jesus Christ. So, in verse 11, here's where we had this descriptive language that Luke gives us. And here he's like, he's talked about the good news, he's announced the good news, and now he's going to tell us what this good news is. Look with me in in verse 11. Let's read it together. For the Scripture says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. There's the good news. There is the good news that today in the city of David, a Savior has been born, and He is Christ the Lord. The long-awaited Messiah has arrived. The one that the prophets had spoken about for hundreds of years, the one that the people of God had, had yearned for, For so long, the long-awaited Messiah had arrived. And this Messiahship here, and notice Luke says that he is the Christ, the Lord. This word Christ, is it's not Jesus' last name. No, it's Messiah. It means the uh, anointed one of God. And, And this Messiahship, this anointing, shows us that Jesus is now fulfilling three roles, prophet, priest, and king. And so here we see that we have this incredible description, this definition of this good news that brings great joy, and it's breaking into human history. This good news that brings great joy, it's for the lost and it's for the lonely, it's for the hurting, it's for the hopeless, it's for the tired, it's for the weary, it's for the broken. This good news that brings great joy, it's for those of us who feel that we're on the last leg of life's journey. It's for those of us who feel right now in this incredible time as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, it's those of us who feel that we quite possibly are at our wit's end. But this good news that brings great joy, this incredible news that we're introduced here in the Gospel of Luke, is that is this good news that that transcends and transforms our sin, that it transcends and transforms our shame and our sorrow and our brokenness. This good news in Christ is so powerful that it it touches, it reaches into the deepest recesses of our soul, and there it brings a healing touch of forgiveness, of love, of grace. It, It is there that it establishes this relationship of peace with God the Father. And this is the time of year where it seems like so many are looking for good news. Not just good news, but good news that brings great joy. And, and some of us, we've searched for that. We, we, we've searched for that peace. We've searched for that joy. We've searched in places, and we've searched in circumstances, and we've searched in habits. 
We've searched in relationships, but to no avail, only to be disappointed again and again. What we thought was good news actually wasn't what we thought that it was. This last May, my wife and I, we were celebrating a special occasion in our marriage. And so I made my way here uh, in the Phoenix area to Arrowhead Mall, and I made my way to Dillard's, and inside of the Dillard's store in the jewelry section, there is an area for the James Avery brand of jewelry. Through the years, Sharon and I, uh, you know, we've purchased some of the James Avery jewelry. We like it. It's inexpensive. And so we've kind of had this connection with this James Avery jewelry. And so I went to Dillard's, and this was May. I, I, I purchased the necklace. And then when I got home from purchasing the necklace, this was going to be a surprise for this special occasion. She did not know that the gift was coming. And so when I got back to the house, I thought, okay, what I'm going to do is I, I, I took the new necklace out of the bag, this actual bag here, and, and I took the necklace out, and I hid the necklace. And, and then I took the bag to, bag to try to, of course, hide the evidence of the whole thing. And so I took the bag, and I, I stuffed it in one of my drawers in my nightstand underneath my, a lot of my winter clothes, long sleeve shirts and those kind of things, and just tucked it away because I didn't think she would be, you know, snooping around there. And so I tucked the bag there and, and quite frankly, forgot about the bag. We had the event in May. She got the necklace all as well. Well, just a few weeks ago, uh, I thought, hey, it's time to, to get out some of the, those winter clothes. And so I, I get into my nightstand, I go to the bottom drawer, I pull out some of my long sleeve t-shirts and those types of things, and, and, and voila, there's the bag. There's the James Avery bag. Totally forgot about this bag. And so I pulled the bag out and thought, oh, here's the bag. Wasn't thinking about it, wasn't even looking for it. So I took the bag and I, I did what I've done here with it. If you can see, I've I kind of reshaped it, and, and this was in there from the original purchase, uh, this paper. So I left it, reshaped it, and, and without even thinking, I just placed it in our bedroom uh, on, on, uh, on our dresser. It's just sitting on the dresser in the bedroom, and I'm going about my day and my business. And then not long after that, I hear my wife say this. She said, what have you done? What have you done? She said it a couple times, and when I heard that, I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure what I've done, but it, it, it probably, I probably didn't do it right. But what have you done? And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? She said, come in here. So I walk back into the bedroom, and she's looking at this James Avery bag, and then it hits me. She thinks I've purchased something for her and left it on the dresser for her to find. But I knew there's nothing in that bag. <laughs> that gift has already been given, man. That, that gift has already been gifted. But, but I felt terrible thinking she thinks I've gone out and, and done something again, and I've purchased another piece of jewelry. She thinks there's something in the bag, and I had to break the news that, honey, there's nothing in that bag. It looks like there is, but there's nothing in that bag, this bag is empty. And now when I think about good news of great joy in our lives, I think about how often we thought there was something in that bag that would satisfy our souls, that would quench the thirst and the longing and the yearning that's in our heart, only to find there was nothing in that bag. Luke tells us that, that the wait is over. The, the Messiah has arrived, and the good news of great joy is now on the scene. And this good news of great joy, if we unpacked it a little bit further, we would begin to understand this is the eternal life that Jesus promises. And yes, it is an eternal element to it, but eternal life is also for the here and the now. This good news that brings great joy, it's for us, and it is for today. And this doesn't mean that Jesus, when we turn our lives and trust Him, it doesn't mean that He removes all of the problems, the pains, the hurt, the sorrows. No, no, no. That's not what this good news of great joy means. In fact, some of those things that we wish He would remove are the very things that He's using to bring us closer to Himself. 
So this good news of great joy doesn't, doesn't mean he, he relieves all the problems. It actually means he gives us his presence. He gives us his presence through the Holy Spirit. That's why at Christmas when we talk about Emmanuel means God with us, and that's the promise of Jesus, that he will always, always be with us. But this good news is only good news for us if we embrace it, if we receive it ourselves. So we must ask the question, how can we experience this good news of great joy? I'm glad you ask. Jesus actually tells us in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 15, where he says, and I quote Jesus, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. That means to change your heart and your mind. Repent, Jesus says, and believe, which means to place your trust in. It's an act of faith. So if you're sitting here on one of these chairs, if you're watching this and you're sitting on a couch or in a chair, you're, you're, you're exhibiting an act of faith and trust. So notice what Jesus says. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The word gospel is the same word good news. So we receive this good news of great joy when we repent and believe. Repentance and faith. The Scripture was said by making Jesus Lord. Remember the good news that broke into human history was the Messiah, the Lord. As you think about celebrating Christmas, this incredible time of year, I, I just want to ask you right now, have you ever experienced this good news of great joy that burst into history in a baby in the person of Jesus Christ this accessible, available good news, have you ever embraced it and received it? If not, I would like just to take a moment and invite you this Christmas to receive the greatest gift you'll ever receive, the person of Jesus. Would you, would you pray this with me? I just ask you to bow your head just for a moment. And if you're ready to receive this good news of great joy, just pray something like this. Just say, Jesus, I give you my life. Just say that to Jesus. Jesus, I give you my life. I admit my need for you. I believe that you are who you say you are, and I confess you as Lord over my life. I receive you in this moment. Come into my life. Make me the man or woman you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that or you think that the Lord is leading you to step into a relationship with him through the person of Jesus, would you please reach out to me? Please reach out to me. You can email me, greg at discoverypointaz.com. I, I would love to have a conversation with you. Or maybe you took that step of faith. You crossed the line and said yes to Jesus. I am ready to receive this good news of great joy. Email me. Let me know. I'd love to send you some, some beginning information as you begin your journey with Jesus and encourage you along the way. You don't have to live here in the Phoenix area. Wherever you're watching this, just let me know. Hey, Pastor Greg, I prayed that I'm ready to begin this journey with Jesus. Well, as we conclude our time together, I just want you uh, to, to wish you a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I pray, I pray from the depths of my heart, my heart and soul, that you and I together will experience this good news of great joy. Merry Christmas.